Good morning. Care for a tour of the Polson Museum today? We've got a closure. Polson uh, has been closed for the pandemic uh, times for, for well, months now, and we've been doing some updates. Thought it'd be kind of fun to show those off. So why don't we take a walk inside? So I'm John Larson, director here at the Polson Museum. And today we wanted to give you a little walk through the mansion and show you just what's been going on here in the last year and a half. As uh, so many businesses across the country have been shut down because of the coronavirus closures, the Polson Museum is no exception. Uh, however, we, on day one of the pandemic closures in March of 2020, hit the ground running with uh, what we wanted to accomplish for many years here, which is a major interior restoration of this 1924 mansion. As many of you know, this is the home of Arnold and Priscilla Polson. Uh, it was built in 1924 as a wedding gift to the couple and was first restored in 1977 when the city of Hoquiam acquired the building and the Polson Museum as a nonprofit formed to make this place a museum for the public and for a place to have Grace Harbor history be showcased. Um, we're coming up on the 100th anniversary of this building and interestingly, we had intended to shut the museum down in the year 2022 for a winter to do a big interior restoration project in anticipation of this centennial. But uh, lo and behold, a couple years prior to that, we get 2020 and the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, we've just taken full advantage of that. Uh, I'm gonna walk you over here first off. We're gonna go into the living room, which is a room that we restored back in 2004. So this doesn't really count because we didn't do anything in here, but we did get inspired with the design that we wanted to achieve with the restoration we've been doing here in the last year, which is to go back to solid wall colors, to eliminate the use of wallpaper, uh, to go to all the clean trim that you see, and to install exhibit lighting that allows us to really showcase the, uh, the things that we are here to, to show off. Um, I got a couple of books over here. These are kind of fun. And I want to share that uh, these were albums that were, were put together back when the mansion was first acquired by the city, 1976. And interestingly, yeah, if you want to focus on that a little bit, the, uh, the city's council debating whether or not to accept this place as a place to uh, house a museum. There's Mr. Schrager, my sixth grade teacher. Um, here you can see a picture of the house as it looked at the time, which was just an overgrown weed fest of a place. And I'm gonna flip this page and just show a few shots here of how poor the condition was of the mansion and the grounds. Um, you're looking at an attic shot. Um, okay. Yeah, this is uh, the back garages. Here you see some of the uh, gardening work that was done, the old cage that existed around. But what I really wanted to show was some of the interior stuff. And here you see, um, I know the glare is there a little bit, but these two young guys were moving old mattresses out of the house. Um, here you can see again some of the gardening and work that was done. But what was really fun was when you get into the inside of this place, um, they started to find old wall sconce fixtures to put back into the building. They organized work parties to come and uh, clean up the grounds, but on the inside of the place, they really had a lot of work to do. Now here you see a few, few shots. And this was the first restoration back in 1977. And you can see the wallpaper there, and you can see here um, them applying, uh, well, in this case, they're not applying new wall, but they were trying to mimic some of the wallpaper that the Polsons had put on in the 50s. So in the 1950s, the Polsons had done their own restoration of this building. They'd, they'd updated it as, as they wanted to with, uh, with a lot of kind of gaudy wallpapers. And what we wanted to do was to go back to the earlier time, the 1924 time period, which was when they had solid wall colors. They had this clean trim. Of course, their trim was more of a kind of a tan color, and I'll show you that a little later. But on day one of the COVID closures in middle of March, 2020, we started um, with the initial thought, not knowing how long this whole closure would last, we thought, well, let's at least get some, some ultraviolet light coverings on some of the windows. So I'm gonna actually walk you down this direction first, which is to, we'll go through the master 
not the master, but the main dining room. I keep thinking master because we've been up in the master bedroom and the master dressing room and the master uh, suite. But we started with needing to put ultraviolet light filtration in our second dining room, which is the little breakfast nook. So this is the main dining room. We just finished this uh, about two months ago. Uh, we got rid of all the flocked wallpaper that was put on in the 1970s. Um, again, we'd already had the updated track lighting here, and we had done the ultraviolet light co coloring in this. So we still got a lot of work to do as far as putting the exhibits back in, but uh, we were able to get all the walls done, redid the radiators, um, you know, polished every one of the switch plates came off. They all got brassoed and cleaned up. Um, if you, you look at the details like this, you know, just taking the, the nickel and, and, uh, and wood, wood details and polishing all these to put on a new layer of paint onto the radiators. Uh, there's a lot of just little details that we had to go through to bring this place back. But where we started in that first closure was here in the in this dining room, which, <laughs> sorry to show off this, but we, we had to have a way to, to hang a light in which to do the uh, um, cleaning of all these hinges, all the doorknobs, all the switch plate covers. And so this has been our workstation hanging from the old chandelier, of course. Uh, but this room took us about three weeks alone to go through to repaint. All right, so I want to just we'll walk through the whole mansion, show you around a little bit of uh, all the details, including all the messes that we make as you, why you have to shut down entirely to the public during one of this type of restoration or this level of restoration. The kitchen we've done back in 2008, so this was not a room we had to tackle again, but this has been our, our uh, ground zero for painting supplies and all the tools, and it's just, it's a pit, right? But uh, bottom line is it's allowed us to to uh, have a staging ground for all the things you have to use when you're uh, restoring a building like this. Now keep in mind, this is a 6,500 square foot mansion and it's got 26 rooms in it. And it feels to me like each little pocket of rooms that we do is like doing a small house in terms of the uh, painting effort that goes into it. And we've, again, taken that level of detail that was not done in the 70s. When they painted back in the 70s, they left all the hinges on everything and they slot paint on all of it. And we've wanted to get that back to what it would have felt like in 1924 when they put brand new hinges on and they would have had clean paint on everything and not had all that level of slop. So um, we'll walk through the hallway. I haven't gotten exhibits in here yet, but uh, again, all the doors came off, everything got painted. Where we had original trim paint, we left it. So here's kind of a good example. You can see this um, tan color. Anytime that somebody hadn't painted over that, we thought, let's leave that just as a record of what was here in the 1920s. So again, the white color was chosen in the 70s, so we've just kind of stuck with that because it's been such a piecemeal effort to restore the building. But uh, each of these doors came off, all the hardware came off. We had to steam off all the wallpaper and the lobby, uh, kind of the foyer entry area here was a huge job in its own right. This was done back last spring when we started the project in March and we got to this area probably by about May or June and all the wallpaper got steamed off. We went to this colonial green color, kind of keeping with the colonial revival styling of the building. Um, the real tedious part here is, as was the cupboards in the room we were in in the dining room, was to do every last one of these uh, stair elements. And, and of course, everything's double coated here. So, you know, you two coats of paint on every last bit of it was just a tremendous amount of work. Uh, I'm gonna walk us into the library. Of course, we're still running a museum during all this. So we've had a lot of donations coming in, people cleaning their own homes. So forgive the piles. The, all this will get cleaned before we reopen, but. Um, but we've been staging stuff in random rooms as we go. This is another room where, uh, again, it had a kind of a strange wallpaper theme. We wound up, uh, you know, putting back the clean colors. And again, all the windows, ultraviolet light filtration, we were able to put, you have to custom cut a single sheet of the ultraviolet protective film for every one of these windows. So that's a, 
bit of a job in its own right because they'll have to be painted in advance and then really carefully cleaned and then do this application of the film. Yeah, so let's walk into the into what was our gift shop. Um, this is a room that we just finished here in our second closure. So to give a little bit of background on what happened with the pandemic, um, again, we had that first closure from March until early July of 2020. Then we reopened to the public because as you see in this room, we've still got our exhibit up that was here with the Smithsonian traveling exhibit called Hometown Teams, How Sports Shape America. And so we're gonna leave this up actually, just because not a lot of people saw this. It was a, a time when we didn't have high visitorship numbers, so we wanted to share the local component of that exhibit. But we reopened, and then as you know, in November of 2020, there was another shutdown of museums across the state of Washington. So immediately, on the day we got shut down again, we started back with this big restoration effort. And where we started again was the dining room that you've already seen, and we wanted to redo the gift shop, which was formerly, formally the sunroom during the Polson's day here. And this room to me was just a stunning space, uh, which has never really been shown well when it's been a museum for the 40 plus years that the Polson's been in operation. We've had our, you know, our book rack was covering the windows. We had desks in front of the windows. We had really no showcase that this room was meant to be, which was a room to enjoy the views of the Hopewim River here. So we chose a nice sunny yellow color, and this room was very tedious again. We shot this with uh, Airless to do all this trim, um, learned a few things about uh, how paint doesn't dry on cold windows very well, So, but it turned out beautifully. The, the, uh, quality of the paint job really, really was, was exceptional, I thought. Um, we did all the radiators again here. We took off every last bit of the original hardware that was from the Polson's day, all the lock mechanisms. Every last one of these got specially polished. And we have yet to put on the ultraviolet light filtration, but we have cut those. That'll be something we'll be doing in the coming weeks. But in this room alone, there are 140 panes here, and that's just one room, so. <laughs> Quite a, quite an effort. Uh, we're just putting now back the uh, display cases, uh, you know, the, the built-ins, uh, glass for that. And what I'm happy to say is that I don't believe we're gonna put the gift shop back here. We like this room so well as it is now, we're gonna turn this into an exhibit room. And then also when people are holding big parties here, whether it be their class reunions or their bridal showers or baby showers, uh, we thought that this would be a room which would make a nice spillover from the main room to have people congregate and enjoy. So for now, I think we'll put a couple display cases in the center and have this as a room that's more open and airy as, as you see now. So. Yeah, so in the gift shop, what was been the gift shop, uh, again, we're not going to have the gift shop here anymore. We're actually going to have in the dining room a little section where we'll exhibit the books that we sell and offer for sale. But this room just really gave such beautiful views. I did want to point out, if you can kind of pan out and look across the river here, what is especially nice from this room and this vantage point is the brick building that you see across the river there was the Polson Logging Company headquarters, built in 1920 as the office space for the Polson Logging Company. And what a better place from which to view that from right here in the Polson's mansion. Uh, they looked right across from office to you know office to home was a quick a quick view. I want to point out one other thing. One thing that we've kind of failed to continue working on with the vigor that we wanted to because of the pandemic is outside of this window. You see the museum has acquired the house next door, which is what we call the Hubble House, and this is a building built in 1915. It's a craftsman uh, bungalow built for Herman and Florence Hubble. And that's to become the museum's new annex building for archival storage of paper-based artifacts, but we've set up a wood shop in the back. And we've done some pretty nice work on it so far. We've actually, we've continued progress on it, but where we'd expected last winter to be working on that, the pandemic really put a, uh, a shift in our focus where we moved back into the mansion here, given this really a golden opportunity uh, to work on this space 
which is always open to the public, and now not being open to the public allowed us to do some really major interior work that, uh, again, we wanted to do for a lot of years. So, well, how about we head upstairs, take a peek at what's going on up there, too. So you noted that we have some holes in our windows here, and I want to point out, we've made a conscious decision to leave all these cracks that we've come upon in the glass. Again, most of these panes are original to 1924, but there was that period between 1965 and 1976 when this mansion was abandoned and it was shrouded by uh, huge hedges, laurel hedges that were out here on the Riverside Avenue. And kids would come through the property and they'd break into the building and they'd play here. Uh, a lot of kids brought their BB guns with them and they'd leave little holes in the windows. And so we thought it was kind of fun to actually, um, I'll show you, there's, there's a good one over here. Uh, we thought it would be kind of fun to just show these off and say this is part of the history of this building. That there was a period of abandonment where uh, damage like this occurred and we're just going to leave it alone. It's, uh, it's a little record of uh, a different era. So here we are on the landing of the master, the main stairwell of the mansion. And this was a space that was just took a lot of effort to get physically to the various parts of the walls. We had to do a scaffolding that we built uh, coming across from that landing over to this so that we could reach up above here to paint. Of course, we worked around the, the railroad cycle as a, well, it's awkward to take down, so we decided to leave that in place uh, while we worked here. But this, this required removing a lot of wallpaper here, and we have a steam machine to do that, and that worked, it made all the difference to get that work done. Uh, but this is going to be where we're going to showcase some of those exceptional, fun uh, artifacts that have to do with, well, Grace Harbor history in general, that's our, that's our world, of course. But those items in our collection that we just really have a special spot in our, uh, uh, just special interest in. The Fairbanks Moore scale, we, we actually just moved this here just last week only to get it out of the way, but I thought, well, this nook, nook here just looked perfect, so I think we're probably gonna leave that there. This was used in Land Grace Harbor in their early days to weigh equipment when they were building those logging blocks and other um, large objects that were part of their logging uh, tool business that they manufactured. The railroad cycle was from Polson Logging Company, and anyway, the rest of it we haven't quite gotten in place, but this is, uh, Kind of a dramatic space when you, when you enter it and it's a little cleaner the way it is. Up above here we've got the elevator that the Polsons had initially installed. You can see we've decided to leave the railing in that unfinished state, which is where they had a gate when the elevator was in operation. And we also chose to leave the hole in the ceiling, which is where they had the shaft and the cables that went through. So in this recent restoration, while we normally would plug a, a hole like that, we thought, hey, let's leave that alone just because it gives a, a better visual of the whole uh, original use of the building. So let's go into the uh, model railroad room. This is kind of fun. Um, again, just staging. We've done this room prior to the pandemic time period as far as restoring it. Uh, so this room had already been painted, and we are going to change out the, the uh, track lighting here. But, but the big challenge was dealing with the model railroad. And I've already taken the skirting off the bottom because we're just about ready to, to uh, wrap this room up. But we had to encapsulate the entire railroad with plastic to make sure that it stayed really clean. Uh, because we did have to generate a lot of dust in here, a lot of damage to the ceiling. Uh, a lot of wall, wall damage as well once we got, the, uh, once we got the, the paper off the walls. So here you can see we stripped again, took off all that old wallpaper. We uncovered some original wall sconce fixture locations, so added uh, some receptacles to that, which would allow us to, to do some exhibit um, work with televisions or lighting. And you can walk around and see what else has happened here. Again, ultraviolet light filtration on everything. All the hardware, all these latches came off. 
Uh, we updated the lighting in here to be a better, uh, smaller track head with uh, LED lights instead of those big fat cans that were here. And then the railroad itself, we had to physically move it away from the wall. So to be able to pull that back took a, a bit of a rigging operation with a come along like an assembly that we made from the wall. And uh, we will in the next week or so be pushing that back against the wall and then start populating this room with the exhibits that uh, will will be permanent here. And this room has always had a logging themed exhibit and we're gonna keep that thematic to this space as well. This was originally the master bedroom and the master dressing room, if you follow me, will be the next room I take you to. It also is one of the more laborious rooms to restore, mainly because of the quantity of trim in the room. And this is where we got smart and used that airless sprayer. We masked off the doors, we masked off the floor, and in short order, we're able to paint all the walls, all the interiors of everything, and put in, uh, you know, all the doors came off, all the hinges came off, everything was clean when we shot this, but this went, it went really well, it worked out quite nicely. And I'm just glad it's done. <laughs> that was a big job. Uh, just this room alone was a big job. But here again, you see we've gone to the ultraviolet light filtration and then again, all the clean hardware. Here's another one of your crack finds where, uh, again, we had some damage from years ago, but we've decided to leave that as kind of a record of that time period. But again, here you get that nice view looking off to the Polson offices in downtown Hoquiam. So it's, uh... So I wanted to share just a little bit about what we've done with the flooring in the building. <clears throat> the nice thing is that the Flooring here in the mansion was never uh, refinished or, or stripped. It's the original 1924 finish. So we've tried to maintain that as best we can wherever it's, um, wherever it's been a little damaged. We've used a linseed oil finish on it, but otherwise it's just clean it really well and then apply that linseed oil, really rub that down. And as you can see, I mean, they are quite nice looking. And again, the floors are one of those really highlight features of this building in that they were all laid with single length boards. So it's hemlock flooring, two and a quarter inch tongue and groove, that at the widest points of the building is 40 feet long. It's just kind of phenomenal to think that they uh, did that level of construction. Uh, this is a great room in which to talk about a secondary benefit of this COVID closure and the restoration that we've been doing is that it's forced us to remove every single artifact from every single room and then have to determine in a cataloging standpoint, in a curatorial standpoint, what's relevant to our mission as a Grace Harbor History Institution, what is not. This room has housed a lot of our clothing collection and Irene Kennedy, who's our collections manager, has done an amazing job of going through everything. So you can see she's gone through, she's taken the uh, you know, just using sticky notes to note the uh, accession number, who donated, what its relevance is to us, and gone through boxes and removed all the, uh, the items there. Things have been repackaged um, with acid-free tissues, ethofoam, and we, we think we're doing a better job than we've ever done in terms of the preservation aspect of the artifacts that are here in the mansion. So, Clothing collection was just a really huge job, but we've also you know, moved all the logging stuff. Here's kind of fun. When you have a chainsaw collection and you need to get it out, what do you do? You shove it in the bathroom. So we took the entire, uh, what, what had been on exhibit chainsaws. We're actually gonna pare this down a little bit from, from what we'd had, but um, this room was another one that had been done prior to the COVID closure, so we didn't have to restore this little bathroom. Um, Heichel's Drugstore. It's a fun artifact there. That came off of the, oh, I think it was where Heichel's was in the um, First National Bank building on the corner of 8th and Simpson Avenues. They, they must have had that inside the store at some point, but it's an original stained glass from their, their time. So let's take a walk down the hall. This is the hall to the servants' quarters in the upstairs. And here's a great example of our in progress of stripping wallpaper. So we're down to the base layer. This is the plaster wall. And 
very little damage here. This is uh, this is a particularly good one where we've been taking the wallpaper off. Sometimes that wallpaper has masked some big cracks and other issues. Uh, you can see there's one up here that's a little severe, but again, using some mud and sandpaper, we've been able to make the corrective measures to that to really bring it back to that nice smooth finish. So these will get our uh, primer coat and then a two two coats of top coat paint, and that's the finish that we're we're sticking with. Uh, what's kind of fun here though is that in taking wallpaper off, of course, the 1977 through 1980 time period wallpaper has was put over other wallpaper that the Polsons had had here. And we've got a base layer right now uh, of that, which you can see. Sometime, and I don't know exactly when, but I'm gonna guess in the 50s, the Polsons put on this pattern wallpaper. And here you can see this kind of pastoral scene with the horses and the trees and you know people milling about. Uh, this was in the foyer and the stairs up to the, to the second floor. We found this pattern throughout. Uh, we were fortunate enough when we did the foyer last spring to have some really nice sections of this that peeled off beautifully. So we, every place that we uncovered wallpaper like this, we took chunks of it out, we accessioned those as collection items, and then they are being preserved as part of our permanent collection. But you can see the wallpaper we're now taking off is this, uh, it's like a, I don't know, kind of a linen-y like stuff that was put on in the 80s. So this is all coming down, as well as the old paper-based stuff that the Polisons had, and then we're going straight to plaster. So that's the path of, of work. The other big thing that happened during the pandemic time um, is that we were fortunate to get a grant through the Grace Harbor Community Foundation, $35,000, which allowed us to install and update our entire fire alarm system in the building. So all these heads here, these are the enunciators, and then what you can see here, we, when we're in a, a dust situation like we're about to be in, we add these uh, plastic covers. You can see this is a, a little dust cover, and that keeps the dust from getting into those heads and tripping it. Um, and we did do that a few times. <laughs> Actually, it was with steam. So the steam machine we're using is one of these little Wagner, um, you know, it's got the, uh, the wallpaper head, so you, when you insert steam against the wall, don't do it next to a fire alarm head that's monitored because the fire department will come and visit you. <laughs> we, we can tell you with truth that that's what happens. But uh, anyway, these little machines work great for taking off wallpaper. In this case, two layers of wallpaper. So we'll soon be, oh, in the next week or so, we'll take all these doors down. All the, all the hinges will come off. Here's a great, you know, we haven't touched these yet, so you can see the level of rust and then the slop that was put on these before. So we'll clean up all this paint and make these really nice and polished as we go forward. Um, another down the hall, we're adding a, a feature to the museum that nobody's been able to see yet. There's a room at the end here that was a closet, it was a linen closet, and it is the, the only room other than my office that has never been touched by anybody since the 1924 construction of the house. And so what we decided to do was to add a glass door to this with a, with a glass front and now turn on the light and allow guests to look into the 1924. So you, you can see here their, their wallpaper pattern that they had and then um, all the original shelving with the original trim paint, which is that tan color. And in this case, we're featuring the Native American basket collection. And I haven't fully gotten things organized here. It doesn't look too bad, I guess, but, uh, but this will become a feature of our exhibits where people can now walk down the hall and see the basket collection. So we've got some interpretation to do here, but, uh, but it's just a great way to get a glimpse into that 1924 uh, pre-restoration time period of the yeah, what I loved about doing this room with the glass door is that it allows us to really showcase a, a one room of the house from that time period, pre-1970s uh, restoration, uh, going back to the 1920s, where you have, again, that tan trim color, the floors are exposed, the wallpaper uh, is original, and we will, not, we will never touch this room is what it amounts to when it comes to future restorations of the building. We're just gonna leave that one as a, as a testament to that time period when the Polsons lived here. 
So the other one is my office, which I don't want to show off too much because it's a pit, but, um, but you can see here, again, it's still got the original trim, it's still got the original wallpaper, and uh, the ceiling, you know, and despite the cracks, it's original. We're just gonna leave that one alone, so. So this is the guest bedroom of the mansion, and this room has always just had kind of this decorative furniture approach to the exhibits. Uh, we did, for a while we thought, well, this room looks pretty good, we'll leave it alone, but now that we've had this opportunity through the coronavirus closures to, to do every room, we're definitely gonna tackle this one next. And of course, once you start looking, you start seeing the real problems. Here around the, it's been hidden all these years, but there is a fireplace back here. We've always had a display case in front of it. You can see the damage to the wallpaper, to the way things have separated with the bricks there. So we'll do a careful job to, to kind of restore that and make it look right. Um, the windows themselves, boy, they're terrible shape when you look at how much paint is chipped off of those and the French doors here. Um, so all this will come down and we will be doing a full, full job in here with regards to the walls, ceiling, uh, trim. Sadly, at some point, somebody sprayed some weird texture on the ceiling here. So we're going to strip all that down. We scraped it in the model railroad room. We scraped it in the, um, the other hallway. And we're going to go back to that smooth finish that was here during the 1924 uh, initial construction of the house. The room that's really worst condition, or at least not condition, but the treatment that was done to it is this bedroom across the way, which we'll go to next. So at some point, somebody took a trowel with a bunch of mud and just made a mess out of the ceiling. So we're gonna have, I don't know if it'll be an inverted belt sander or how we'll get that down, but we're gonna make this smooth again before we're done. So these are the final rooms of this effort. So while we're not open, uh, again, here we're in May of 2021, we're anticipating opening up in July of 21. Um, this is the big job that we have yet to do is the bedroom, the two bedrooms in the hallway, and then we're finished with the entire interior of the mansion. Uh, we've got the little bathroom around the corner. We did um, actually last, the first closure, we were able to get in here and just do these windows, make sure we had ultraviolet protection on the windows. So at least those are finished. Um, where we'd had exhibit closets on exhibit, and if you wanna step around, I'll show you this space. We are now turning these into collection storage. And in this case, uh, we've got a dress collection. A lot of these will go back on exhibit, but we're gonna have all these cedar line closets now used for textile storage of the collections that we have. And Irene Kennedy, as I mentioned, uh, she has been so busy. Every last one of these she's gone through, she's made a tag that, that uh, takes our database records, transfers them to a tag so she can look directly on what each piece is and what its history is. And that's informed us as to how we want to uh, store, what items, some things have never been cataloged, like things have just walked in the door without any record of them. Uh, some of those were candidates for deaccessioning, which will be uh, either passing on to other museums or in some cases selling and some real rare cases where the condition was just awful. We've actually disposed of a couple items, but uh, for the most part, things were really pretty well uh, in order and we, we put them in much better order now. So. So we're going to be trying to reopen this place in July of 2021. And again, we've got those few rooms upstairs to finish the restoration work. And as you've walked through this building, you've seen the sheer volume of things we've had to move. So from display cases and artifacts in every single room to completely take them down and move them to other rooms, it's going to take us a bit to get these exhibits back up and running. And our plan with the exhibits is to redo those permanent exhibits that people have been looking at for the last nearly 40 years in some cases and have a fresh face for everything. So uh, we expect to have much more locally specific content. Grace Harbor County history is, is again our mission and our hope and plan with that is to have exhibits that will really sing to people when they walk in and they'll understand that the house itself is its own artifact so we've done scanning throughout the pandemic of original photographs that we've come across that have to do with the house itself. 
and we'll be showcasing those in each room as you walk through. Of course, we've always had some pictures, but we'll be adding some additional details to that, um, including not just house. Uh, we'll have thematic exhibits that pertain to our local Native American history here, uh, logging, sawmilling, of course, being priorities, and then the featured exhibits like the um, clothing and fine dishware, the kitchen works, all that will be, will be uh, I think, real showpieces for this, this museum. And when we reopen, which uh, we'll be making plenty of announcements of in, in July, uh, we're just looking forward to having guests come in and enjoy the space, which is uh, not only to tour on an individual basis, but we'll also, again, be offering this space for use for, for parties and gatherings. So, uh, again, keep your eyes peeled, Pulse Museum here in Hopewell.